Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our council meeting and committee of the whole meeting today. If we would, uh, if you'd join me in rise and we'll sing O Canada. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. True patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Madam Clerk, would you take the roll call, please? Councillor Mackey. Present. Councillor McKay. Present. Councillor Carlton. Councillor Pringle. Present. Councillor McQueen. Councillor Nielsen. Councillor Patterson. Present. Councillor Dickert. Councillor Kentner. Councillor Keaveny. Councillor Boddy. Councillor Gregg. Present. Warden Milne. Present. Councillor Dobreen. Present. Councillor Matrasovs. Councillor Borneo. Councillor Borneo senses her at this time. Councillor Doug Hutchinson. And Councillor Eccles is away today. So Councillor Doug Hutchinson is in attendance on his behalf. Councillor Tom Hutchinson. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk, and and indeed, welcome to Councillor Hutchison from uh, from West Gray. So, if if the people over on this side would get their names a little bit closer, the same as these two over here, then there'd be this confusion about Mackie McKay would be a lot easier to sort out. But nonetheless, we'll proceed. <laughs> so, before we begin, I want to acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the Anishinaabe. Six Nations of the Grand River, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat, Wyandot, Wyandot peoples on whose traditional territories we gather and whose ancestors signed treaties with our ancestors. We recognize also the Métis and Inuit whose ancestors shared this land and these waters. May we all, as treaty people, live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with all its diverse peoples. Is there any declaration of interest regarding any item on today's agenda? Not seeing any, if one should arise, you are of course free to declare it at that time. And I'll note that Councillor Bordignol has now joined the meeting online. Uh, we have a special guest with us here this morning. So with council's indulgence, I'd like to move the uh, item news and celebrations to this point of the meeting. Does anyone object? No, okay, well, as I mentioned, uh, we do have Ray Robertson here this morning with us. He was uh, very recently inducted into the Canadian Agricultural Hall of Fame. And I believe we have a short video clip that we're going to show. Rob's going to do that. Here we go. <clears throat> Ray Robertson has committed his career in Canadian agriculture to working on behalf of farmers and the industry to build sustainable programs that adapt to economic, environmental, and political realities. Born and raised in Markdale, Ontario, Ray has been a dairy farmer, fieldman for the Ontario Soil and Crop Improvement Association, and builder of organizations. With a particular passion for forages, 
he helped put Canadian hay on the world stage and improved the market for farmers across Canada. Ray has always known the value of forages to soil health and crop rotation, but recognized the crop was undervalued and underrepresented. His perseverance was instrumental in starting the Canadian Forage and Grassland Association, CFGA, a national voice for the diverse needs of the forage industry that helped build a stronger market for Canadian hay. Ray was a founding director with the organization for 12 years, including a four-year term as chair. Through the CFGA, Ray identified local, national, and international demands for Canadian hay. He led trade missions to China, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, and the U.S., and hosted tours in Canada to promote the value of Canadian hay with visitors from the Caribbean, Middle East, China, and Nepal. Canadian hay is now a high-quality, respected product in many countries, thanks to Ray. When rural extension offices were closed in Ontario, Ray saw the opportunity to continue providing valuable services and programs to farmers with Gray Agricultural Services Centre, a fee-for-service communication hub he established to deliver education and extension services to farmers. The centre follows the successful template of Ray's endeavours. Start with a vision, develop an organisational structure and recruit people. Find financing and empower people to make it their own. A lifelong ambassador for environmentally sustainable agriculture, Ray received the T.R. Hilliard Distinguished Agricultural Extension Award and has been inducted into the Ontario Agricultural Hall of Fame. Ray served 15 years on the board of Gay Lee Foods Cooperative and nine years on the Canadian Cooperative Association Board, where he chaired the International Program Committee to support cooperatives around the world. In this role, Ray helped local farmers in Nepal improve a small dairy cooperative and initiated support to see a new library, science and computer lab built at the local school. An innovative thinker, organized leader and world-class champion for Canadian forages, Ray Robertson is a team builder and problem solver for Canadian agriculture. Welcome to the Canadian Agricultural Hall of Fame, Ray. As I mentioned before, Ray is here with us today and his wife Evelyn is here as well. So Ray, would you like to come up and say a few words? I, I I don't know if there's a more distinguished voice in Gray County agriculture today. I don't know who it would be, but uh, Ray, uh, I, yeah, I can't say any more than what was in the video. So go ahead, Ray, if you'd like to say a few words, just uh, Savannah will get the microphone. Well, thank you very much, Brian, and two members of County Council. Um, I was uh, certainly surprised to have this happen to me, but it's one of those, those things that I just... Uh, some other people seem to think there was something I could had done. Just to go through, I made some notes because I maybe could take most of your morning if I was to talk, start talking about the things in agriculture, both in Gray County, the region of Ontario, across Canada, and overseas. But I made a few notes to myself so I can kind of stay on track. And uh, yeah. as I reflect on considerable acknowledgement I've received in 2023, it is incumbent on me to identify many of the people and organizations who have been a major part of my team and deserve tremendous recognition. Certainly, Gray County Council is at the top of my list. It is also an important. It's also important for me to recognize my wife Evelyn and, and our family, who have always been very supportive of me. My wife Evelyn is here, and also my son is here. It looks like I've got a police escort today, but I, he knew that I had a pretty rowdy bunch here, so he thought to come along. So welcome, Brad. And Ed. I've always considered Gray County an important uh, player and and part of the hub that has enabled us to assist in developing organizations and deliver many valuable programs and events that would otherwise not have been possible. Looking back, the provincial government of the day in 2000 closed all the county agriculture offices across the province on April 30th. With the leadership and support of Gray County Council and staff, Gray County Agricultural Services opened on May 1st, 2000. During a meeting in 
uh, early 2000 with uh, Norm Gamble and C the CEO of Gray County and Warden Howard Gregg, they were extremely positive about the proposal. And when I appeared at County Council, it was a unanimous decision. Gray County Council and staff recognized that it was an opportunity to support agriculture, which was the largest industry in the county, and this would fill the void created when the provincial government pulled out. I believe it is fully recognized that we have met the challenge and served the broad range of industry from the smallest to the largest producers and a whole bunch in between. Sorry, I got sort of lost my words here. Uh, a whole bunch in between and the general public, including many related to agriculture in Gray County and beyond. The Ag Center has effectively served as an efficient hub, which we have been able to serve and deliver beneficial service to farmers and the general public, in addition to assisting county staff with agricultural projects. We were successful in obtaining a number of contracts that helped us serve many producers and organizations, as well as spread the word. For several years, during the early years of the Environmental Farm Plan Program, Gray, Gray County was recognized as having the largest number of farmers participating in the program of any province in Ontario. The staff at Gray Ag Services certainly have grown in their positions and are well qualified to take office to qualify to take the office and programming to greater heights in the future. Retirement in Gray County, Gray Ag is in my plans, and I truly I'm truly proud of what the staff can achieve going forward. I must confirm that Lori Smith and the team of Gray Egg have been high, in high gear at the plan and deliver inspiring offerings of top-notch programs and information to area farmers in the ag industry for 24. The 58th annual Gray Bruce Farmers Week kicks off the seven-day conference in Elmwood in early January, followed by a record of 23 winter courses starting in mid-January through to late April. With reference to my inductions, I have never dreamed of anything, any kind of recognition I have. Being told that the initiatives I started in the leadership in, and the leadership provided will be a major benefit to farmers and the agriculture industry across Canada for decades in the future made, re, made me realize that our efforts were truly worthwhile. For that, I pay tribute to so many people who have worked with and deserve more recognition than I can possibly do justice in just a few words today. I want to thank Gray County Council and your staff for your many good wishes and express my appreciation for your support and collaboration as we work together to advance agriculture industry in Gray County. As I conclude, there is one passing thought. If farmers are to feed the world, we need all the help we can get. I know we're up to the challenge. May God bless you all. Thank you, Ray. And as I say, I don't know of a more distinguished voice in Gray County agriculture today. So thank you very much, Ray, and congratulations. Okay, well, we'll uh, we'll move on to our next item of business, which is the adoption of the minutes. The first we have is the special committee of the whole pre-budget discussion minutes dated November 3rd. Would someone care to move those minutes, please? Uh, Sue, or Councillor Patterson and Councillor Dickert. Any discussion? All those in favor? That is carried, thank you. The next are the minutes from the special committee of the whole pre-budget discussion dated November 3rd. Would someone care to move those minutes? Councillor Hutchison. Councillor McKeveny, uh, any discussion? All those in favor? That is carried. The next is the County Council and Committee of the Whole Minutes dated November 9. Someone care to move those, please? Councillor Carlton and Councillor um, Pringle, any discussion? All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Committee of the Whole closed session minutes dated November 9th. Someone move those minutes, please. Councillor McKay and Councillor Mackey. Excellent. Any discussion? All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Long term care uh, committee of, man of management minutes dated November 14th. Someone care to move? Councillor Hutchison and, oh, we can't put both of those on. <laughs> Councillor Patterson. Any discussion? All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. <laughs> um, the Long-Term Care Committee of Management closed session minutes dated November 14th. Someone care to move those, please? Councillor Keaveny, Councillor Nielsen. Any discussion? 
All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. The CAO Performance Evaluation Committee minutes uh, dated November 16th. Councillor Hutchison, Councillor Dickert, any discussion? All those in favor? That is carried. CAO Performance Evaluation Committee closed meeting minutes of November 16th. Someone move those. Councillor Body. Councillor McKay. Mackey. I was, yeah, I was 10 minutes into the meeting before I screwed it up. So I apologize again. But anyway, we got it right. Councillor Mackey. Any discussion? All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Um, I don't believe there's any closed meeting matters required now. Nope. Uh, reports. Gray Bruce Public Health Board of Health minutes. Uh, is Dr. Era going to? Yeah, uh, there he is. Welcome. Good morning, Mr. Dr. Era. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Good morning. I'll just get uh, I'll just get somebody to move and second these minutes first. Councillor McKay and Councillor Carlton. Dr. Era, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Good morning, Council. The uh, Update from the minutes is um, three points. One is related to the flu and COVID vaccine and management of uh, respiratory outbreaks in Cray Bruce. The operation continues to be uh, optimal. Uh, we, we have the capacity, we have the knowledge and the collaboration with uh, local partners. Uh, so that, that, that area continues to, to be as good as uh, it could be. Uh, the other two points, one is related to modernization of public health or strengthening public health. The Ministry of Health uh, made an announcement a few months ago, and we're still receiving information about uh, the, the direction. Uh, the, there is uh, a few elements to it. One is uh, an increase of 1% per year for three years for health units across Ontario uh, with the with the inflation rate and, and uh, multiple factors and the collective agreements uh, that, that were signed, the 1% is, is actually a budget uh, um, a freeze. And, and th that is across the province. There has been a number of health units that activated restructuring and layoffs. We will do our best to actually maintain uh, services and uh, um, we will keep you posted about uh, the progress of this file. The uh, uh, final update is about the uh, private well water testing program. The Gray Bruce Public Health, just in, in terms of background of the program, launched a locally developed service to ensure uh, Gray and Bruce residents have equitable, timely access to Public Health Ontario uh, private well testing program. And the new service is developed in collaboration with area municipalities. Thank you to everybody around the table for your support, there are 14 locations and two routes, one in Gray and one in Bruce. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, there are two locations also, uh, one in On Sound and one in uh, Walkerton where there is testing daily. The rest of the 14 locations, uh, the test is weekly and we look forward to feedback down the road from uh, the residents and the municipalities about the uh, optimization of this service, we can always reevaluate and and improve as we need, uh, as as the uh, residents need. And that's my update, Mr. Chair. Open to questions as always. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions for Dr. Era? Not seeing any. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Moving on to bylaws, we have uh, two bylaws there. All right, call for the vote to receive those minutes. All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, bylaws, we have two. The first is a bylaw to adopt amendment number 18 to the County of Gray official plan affecting lands described as part lot 27, concession 16, Proton AS uh, in GS IN GS 148863 Geographic Township of Proton, now in the Township of Southgate. Someone care to move that bylaw, please. Councillor Deckard. 
Councillor Patterson, any discussion? All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. And the clerk wishes to share a few words of wisdom of, uh, regarding the uh, confirming bylaw. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Just wanted to bring to council's attention that going forward, there will be a confirming bylaw on each council agenda, just ahead of some proposed changes that we're going to make in 2024 to our meeting structure and um, procedure bylaw. So just to bring that to your attention, it'll be probably consistent with your local municipalities instead of the annual once a year. Thank you, Chair. So is there a mover and seconder for the confirming bylaw? Councillor McQueen, Councillor Carlton. Any discussion? All those in favor? That is carried. And I apologize, I got so carried away with Ray's presentation there, I forgot to ask, are there any other news or celebrations that any councillor would wish to share with us? Councillor Hutchison. Yes, good morning, council. Um, on behalf of the mayor of West Gray, I'd like to announce that West Gray and Gray County has another world-class athlete in its midst. Um, over the past couple of weeks, uh, Alex McGilvery, who is the son of Jim Jennifer and Jim McGilvery of Durham, competed in the softball World Cup under 18 tournament in Mexico for Team Canada, where they brought home a bronze medal. Alex was also nominated to the um, to the all-world team. And um, uh, as a third baseman. So I'd like to congratulate uh, Alex and his family for his his uh, award. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor Keaveny. Thank you, Mr. Warden, and good morning, everyone. Meaford is always the place to be, but especially uh, next weekend, November the 30th through to December the 3rd, that is our second annual Christmas on the Bay event, which is an outdoor European market held in our market square. Um, incredibly exciting with artisan vendors, everything from Christmas decorations to um, woolen socks, anything that you can imagine. Uh, the mascot Georgie will be on site and there's lots of entertainment from Indigenous crafts to cookie decorating to live music to there will be a caricaturist there. There's a princess show and there's uh, the drag king and queens are going to be back. Uh, there'll be the Christmas tree lighting and Santa Claus will be present. And as well on the second is our uh, Kinsman's Santa Claus parade. And that will start at uh, five o'clock. And on the Sunday, December the 3rd, uh, Mayor Kentner and myself will each be doing Christmas readings at the Market Square. So it's uh, a pretty exciting meet for in uh, weekend and we invite everyone to come and join us. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Yeah, it sounds busy indeed. That's good. Councillor Mackey. Thanks, Mr. Warden. Good morning, County Council. Just wanted to uh, congratulate the uh, Housing Department, Anne-Marie and uh, her team, and their partnership with the uh, CMHA. Uh, we had the opportunity to have a, a tour of the 14th Street Transitional Housing uh, this morning, and it's a wonderful looking uh, building, and I think it'll provide a tremendous opportunity for some of the vulnerable citizens citizens within our uh, community that uh, need that uh, that form of assistance. So um, again, just thank you for the, the work that you've done and it'll certainly be uh, well used by a number of people. Thank you, sir. And indeed it is an amazing looking facility. Anyone else? Oh, Council Carlton. Thank you and good morning, County Council. I'd just like to mention that yesterday, Mayor Boddy and I were privileged to be part of the group who were honoring the Peace Medal of person who was awarded that by the YMCA yesterday. And that went to Sharif Rahman and his family were there to accept it. So it was a wonderful ceremony and good to see that happen. Thank you, Sue. Anyone else? Okay, not seeing any. I entertain a motion to adjourn from the council portion of the meeting. Councilor Carlton and Councilor McQueen. All those in favor? That is carried. We'll just take a minute to change over to Committee of the Whole.